What is up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to have Jeremiah Johnson here with me today. And before we get into this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. So Jeremiah, I'm super excited to have you on my channel. This is a huge honor. I love your ministry. I love what you guys are doing. I've been following you and your wife on Instagram and it's been awesome just to see your family yeah. and how you guys are serving the Lord and other people and how you guys are loving other people and just what you're doing with the Altar Global. So if you just wanna share about your family, your ministry, what you guys are doing, that would be awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, Hannah, for having me on the show today. Welcome. Super excited about what God's doing. You know, I uh, grew up in a charismatic home. Mm -hmm. uh, father pastored a church, one of four boys. Uh, kind of grew up in a, you know, a fun wrestling, football, all that kind of thing. Ended up down at Southeastern University, Lakeland, okay. Florida. Uh, met my wife there. Uh, got married our senior year of spring break. Uh, she's from Ohio. I oh, know you're really? from Ohio. That's awesome. So I grew up in Indiana mm -hmm. myself, so go Midwest. That's awesome. Um, and so, yeah, <laughs> Indiana, Ohio, meet in Florida. Yeah. Uh, we end up graduating and planted a church, Heart of the Father Ministry. We were there for over a decade and okay. uh, recently moved up to the Charlotte region, handed off. We have two campuses down there in Central Florida, handed off the campuses and um, have launched a movement called the Altar Global have a passion for the return of Jesus Christ, which yeah. I feel kind of puts things in perspective uh, no matter what we're doing. And so mm -hmm. for us, we're trying to love our kids well. We've got three girls and a boy uh, trying to do marriage right, have fun, love the That's Lord, awesome. and uh, just steward what He's given us. That is so cool. I love that. And I love what you guys are doing with your ministry. So basically your ministry is preparing the church for the return of Christ, right? Yeah, yeah, we uh, have everything from a ministry school, the Altar School of Ministry, That's which awesome. helps to raise up people in every sphere of society. Uh, we have monthly gatherings in Charlotte, and then we have national conferences every couple of months. So we're really involved in this reality, but yeah, I think part of my my passion is helping people get ready and uh, live life. What, how, one of the things I like to ask is how would your life change if you knew Jesus was coming back tonight? Wow. And uh, would that, if awesome. that would change anything that you're mm -hmm. doing, then we need to make some changes. Yes, yeah. So what, when you are talking about the like, return of Christ, and I know a lot of my viewers a lot, they ask like, how do I get ready for Jesus's return? Like, when we know Jesus is coming back. So what is your like main suggestion for people to prepare for his return? Yeah, I found like when you talk about the return of Christ, people start arguing about, you know, is he coming before the tribulation, <laughs> yeah. after the tribulation? It's yeah. like all these charts and people just yeah. get lost in it. I'm a very practical person. So I know if Jesus is coming back, I'm going to have to give an answer for how I'm treating my wife. Yes. If Jesus wow. is yeah. coming back, mm -hmm. I'm going to have to answer for what kind of dad I am. Yeah. If Jesus is coming back, how am I spending my money? Yeah. Am I just like wasting it on Starbucks 24-7? <laughs> yeah. Am I giving to missions? <laughs> All good. of those things. So, good. Hannah, I'm a, a lot of people know me as a prophetic voice, and mm -hmm. I have a lot of dreams and visions, and I'm in the news a lot. But I think at the core, I'm just a super practical guy. That's I really awesome. believe in winning at home. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, I've been doing itinerant ministry for almost 15 years now. Mm -hmm. I've been around um, a lot of famous people uh, whose home lives are not good. Yeah. Uh, it's easy to use social media to cover up what's happening at home. For sure. You know, you even see a lot of people, they constantly post about ministry. Yeah. And you don't even know if they're married. You don't even know if they have any kids. Yeah. And that really, that's a red flag for me. Oh, and yeah. so, um, you know, I just, I really believe in loving our spouse as well, uh, being there for our kids when they need them. I know I grew up with with three brothers, so having girls was a new experience for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, we would just like always wrestle and fight all the time. My son, we loved to wrestle. But even like with my daughters, I noticed those times when they, you know, hey dad, can we talk? Yeah. And I know for me, that's time to shift out of my busyness yeah. in ministry and like, jump in, you know, at yeah. nighttime and like, let's talk and all yeah. those things. So mm -hmm. I just, uh, I want to see a generation mm -hmm. win at home before we have public influence. And again, nothing so wrong good. with influence, but I've just found uh, in a lot of my interactions with a lot of famous leaders in the body of Christ, it's a cover up 
for mm -hmm. dysfunction at home. So I'd lo wow. love to see that change. Yeah, that is awesome that you talk about that because that's something that I've been passionate about on my channel because I grew up as a pastor's kid and I'm very thankful my parents spent time PK. with us. PK is right there. <laughs> I'm very thankful that my parents, you know, took that time at home to spend time with us and train us in the Lord. Like I would be a totally different person if they didn't do that. Like. I know I see a lot of pastor's kids fall away because pastor's kids I know personally yeah. because their their parents got so focused on the ministry that they didn't focus on their main ministry in their house, raising their kids and training up their kids to be warriors for Jesus and just to be a loving, caring family in general. So uh, I think there's a scripture verse, I think it's in Timothy, where it talks about if a man can't even take care of his household, mm -hmm. how can he take care of the house of God? So yeah. what are some like, practical ways where you are making sure that your ministry is not being over your family. Sure. Yeah. So we're big on date night. Uh, my wife and I, if you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, you yeah. see lots of pictures of date night. So we honestly try to go out once a week or once every other week. That's and, awesome. you know, we've got four kids under 10. And so we get that you got to find a sitter. It, costs money, like all of those things, but what you sacrifice for, you know, is like what's important to you. And mm -hmm. so we really, um, you know, we'll be married 12, 12 years here soon. You know, it's just like, it's a journey, you know, yeah. of love, uh, you know, finding out will, you'll see us at Top Golf sometimes and we're <laughs> like just hitting, you know, just being goofy, <laughs> going to Ikea. That's awesome. Sometimes, uh, you know, my wife loves fitness and stuff. So we'll go run and do smoothies. Or if <laughs> it's me, cool. I want to go to the movies or something. So <laughs> yeah. we really make, um, you know, continually sacrificing and, and, you know, filling up what we call a love tank. You know, yeah. you can't just take, take, take. You got to fill that up. So That's good. date night's hugely important. Mm -hmm. um, for us, we also, beyond like going to church, you know, have times as a family mm -hmm. where we, you know, turn worship on. We read the Bible to our kids. You know, I'm also a big fan of, you know, positioning your kids for an encounter. Yeah. And that can happen at home. But I know even, you know, here at Fresh Start Church, my daughter, was radically impacted uh, in revival. Uh, I don't wow. know if you've ever seen, there's a viral video. I jumped in a baptismal tank at the North Georgia I revival. I <laughs> and it, you know, I think it was Church of Laugh or mm -hmm. Church of Milk put it on, but there there is a backstory there where I jumped, they, you know, a lot of miracles had happened in this water, Pastor Todd Smith, I get done preaching, I jumped in the water and unknowingly, my daughter was on the front row. She was eight years old at the time. The moment I hit the water, the power of God hit her. She fell out of the chair, was baptized in the Holy Spirit, wow. and had a powerful encounter with the Lord. And so, wow. you know, she's already traveling with me, um, you know, just That's some so of those cool. things. So just kind of bringing them along, prioritizing date night, all of those things, yeah. you know, and again, Anybody could come in with a camera to our house apart from all social media and it's we're the same at home as That's we awesome. are in public. That's There's cool. no two face and hypocrisy in that. I just I believe that people are so <laughs> yeah. tired mm -hmm. of the show. They're tired oh, of the yeah. theatrics. They see right through it. So mm -hmm. we just kind of try to, you know, the same people as we are at home, we're in public. That is awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, um, I was just talking to Pastor Kim about that. There's no junior Holy Spirit, and it's cool because your kids can be baptized in the Holy Spirit too and have their own personal relationship with Jesus. I think parents often neglect that, and they expect the church to raise their kids. But when they see their parents doing ministry or like living for the Lord and doing all these things and being so zealous, but there's no wisdom there and there's that lack of love in the home, I believe like that's where kids are like, they they know like kids can tell the difference and they see like, oh yeah, mom and dad is living for Jesus. Like that's their relationship with Jesus. And they end up walking away because they see the hypocrisy. There's no, there's a, there's double mindedness and there's like double standards. So um, that's really cool that you guys do that. That's awesome. Yeah, I was, my mom had a dream when I was in her womb to name me Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And so I was born dead, the cord is wrapped around my neck. I was wow. known as a, a miracle baby in the Miami, Florida hospital I was wow. born in. 
And so even for me, my entrance into life, they knew something was supernatural. I started dreaming when I was seven years old. I prophesied from my dad's church at nine. Wow. And so even having parents, I know for me, my dad always said, there's no junior Holy Spirit because there's no junior devil. And, wow. you know, the, you know we, we know the devil is constantly, you know, wreaking havoc. And so, yeah, just growing up in an environment of the supernatural, we saw people get out of wheelchairs. I tell people I really didn't meet a religious spirit until I went to Bible college seminary. And what I mean by that is I met people who said they believed in something that they didn't practice. Wow. Yeah. So I went to school and people said they believed in tongues, but no one spoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. They believed in divine healing, but didn't pray for it. And so, yeah, definitely having parents and having that spiritual atmosphere is so important. Uh, that in place of encounter, you, yeah. you, everybody has to have an encounter for themselves. And as parents and things, we can't want an encounter for our kids that we ourselves aren't willing to have. That's a good so. word right there. <laughs> that is a good word. So living the spirit-filled life, living a life that's, that's on fire, that's real, where you're actually walking the talk and being a person of the secret place before you're ever a person in the public place. Like, how do you do that? And how do you live out that spirit filled on fire life? Yeah, I just, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of consistency. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a big fan of faithfulness. That's I remember good. there was an individual a couple of years ago that had followed me. We had, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers online. I had been on at every major television station there was and he wanted to be mentored by me. You know, he saw me as a famous prophet person. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I invite, he, he, it was like, became such an annoyance to me, honestly, pestering. I was wow. like, okay, why don't you come and just spend time at my house? Mm -hmm. And so having four kids, he thought I was gonna wake up at four in the morning. He thought I was gonna do all of this spiritual stuff. And what he saw was me wake up, let my wife sleep in, I made all our kids breakfast. <laughs> I took them to school. Yeah. And it was like, I just, again, loved well. And at the end of our time, he was just like, well, like, what's the <laughs> secret? Like, yeah. where is the, and I'm like, you know, again, just taking him back to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 14, it says, pursue love yeah. and eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Yeah. And so, you know, again, Hannah, I, I really do have a concern in this generation that a lot of people, they look at spirit-filled ministers going crazy online and casting yeah. devils out of people and traveling and all this stuff. And again, from my personal experience, 75% of these people you see online, they're not loving well. Their marriage is erect. They've wow. been married three times. Their kids are nowhere even serving the Lord. Yeah. Uh, I just know for me, consistency, yeah. faithfulness, mm -hmm. serving. I'll be traveling on the road and come back and my wife, you know, we, we schedule this. Like when I get back mm -hmm. from this trip, my wife will go get her nails done. That's awesome. She'll go shopping. Like, you know, again, awesome. she's sacrificing for me to be here. So mm -hmm. I'm not going home and, oh, you know, bless the man of God. He's so famous. Everybody <laughs> yeah. loves him. She's giving me a child yes. and she's going out the door. Yeah. So just, just some of that, you know, and I just encourage people watching, you know, don't be enamored by people's gifting, by their platform, how many followers or subscribers. Yeah. I'm just telling you, because I know these people, yeah. most of those folks, <laughs> it's really sad. Yeah. Um, but look for how they treat their wife, their mm -hmm. interactions with their kids. You know, do they love well? I mean, you know, we we go to revival services and the fire of God is there. And then at the restaurant, they're rude to the waitress. They don't tip. I'm just like, you know, it's an issue. It's a problem. I think it's a turnoff for a lot wow. of people that are looking for real authentic Christianity. Wow. Yeah. I mean, we're seeing a lot of ministers, like celebrity ministers fall away. And it's no surprise because they're not living the way that they're portraying that they're living in public behind the scenes. Um, so, I mean, just with all of that happening, what is your what's your thoughts on that and how can they stay that straight and narrow and what's like 
uh, the most important thing that they can do to make sure that they're living pure and holy behind the scenes? Yeah, you know, I think that there's the test of um, notoriety mm -hmm. and then there's the test of obscurity. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people, they pass the test of speaking truth and loving well when no one is looking. Mm -hmm. But the test of notoriety is what will you do with influence? What will you do with money? Mm -hmm. What will you do with the following? Yeah. And so a lot of people, they want to kill Goliath using the David example, but they've never slayed the lion and the bear. Mm -hmm. And so again, we want to have public victories without a history of private battles. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's easy to speak truth in a vacuum. Yeah. You know, I know a lot of people, they're passionate, they, you know, and they, Zeal. yeah, you know, <laughs> wh why isn't this person? And I'm like, because you've never had the status, you've never been tempted like they have. Yeah. And so the larger following that you have, the more temptation that there is. 100%. And so a lot of people just haven't known that. So, you know, I, I would say, you know, wherever that you're at, wherever you're watching today and you have a dream in your heart and you, you, you haven't really taken a step or maybe you're watching mm -hmm. today and you have some kind of influence, mm -hmm. I would just encourage you to go back to making sure that your foundation is right. You know, it's like, you know, the, the, when hurricanes come down in the south, the trees that end up surviving hurricanes, it's not always the tallest trees, it's the one that have the deepest roots. Mm -hmm. And so storms are gonna come, challenges, tests, yeah. family struggles. Look for people that have rock solid roots, mm -hmm. not always the tallest, largest <laughs> yeah. followings, that yeah. kind of thing. Sometimes yeah. they look great, but when storms come, they've built on the sand. Wow, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, I, even, I think about like, as my platform has grown as well, I've faced the more temptations like you're talking about. And it's like, you have to kill pride. You have to stay humble. Otherwise you will fall. God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And I just think that what's super important is staying in the secret place and staying in that place of prayer. And when I think about like the interview process, even for pastors nowadays, most of the time they don't ask you what your prayer life is like. They don't ask you what your devotional life is like. And that just like, even my own self being in ministry with my family and like when I've gotten interviewed for things, I don't get asked what my prayer and devotional life is like. And it really like puzzles me because I'm like, we have, we have all this zeal and this passion for ministry, but there's no like just checking the behind the scenes life. Like who are you truly when nobody's watching? Integrity is yeah. so, so important. So yeah. for you, like with prayer, the secret place, um, <laughs> What's, what is that importance to you? Like, how would you practically, I guess, explain that to Gen Z and the younger generations yeah. watching? I'm kind of laughing. That was like the very first question I asked my wife when we met, how's your devotional life? Really? That's um, awesome. That, that was what was most valuable to mm -hmm. me. And I really think it's a great question to ask anyone that you're interested in dating or marrying. Mm -hmm. uh, oftentimes people you know, get into relationships looking to find identity, looking to find love, and something honestly that that person, even if you get married, you can't live vicariously through them. Yeah. You have to have your own relationship with the Lord. So, um, you know, great, great question. You know, as someone who church planted, um, who hired, uh, you know, numerous, numerous staff members for me, I always ask that question. That's awesome. And so, because again, I think our priorities determine where we're headed. And so yeah. we interviewed a lot of individuals that had Bible college degrees, seminary degrees, all of these things. Uh, some of them had large followings and, you know, it's like, you know, how's your devotional life? How's your, so I would rank that as number one, yeah. you know, and what's your, it's interesting even in Titus and Timothy in the New Testament, mm -hmm. when they're instructing leadership qualifications, it has zero to do with gifting. Every qualification has to do with character. Yeah, and character good. is forged in the secret place through fiery trial. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking of the scripture, you know, in Jeremiah, he says the, the, the priests lead by their own authority. The prophets prophesy falsely and my people love it so. Hmm. I think that part of the problem is, is again, on social media, on, on television, we are enamored with the yeah. way people look public image oh, yeah. by the following. And mm -hmm. so I think that there's an appetite 
that's out there in this generation that needs sanctified. We need to sanctify our appetites. Oh, and yeah. again, e even when you ask people, well, what do you like about this person? Mm -hmm. Oftentimes they say, well, they can preach great. They have miracles. And again, what I'm saying is, yeah, but what about their marriage? What about their family? What about their character? What mm -hmm. God considers well done, we need a generation considering well done. So yeah. uh, it's really just sort of time to get our priorities in alignment with God's mm -hmm. priorities and recognize sometimes it's not popular. It's not what people are craving. But at the end of the day, we're really here to please the Lord. Yes. Yes and amen. That is a good word. Um, yeah, I just think about that, too, because um, as you were saying, like meeting more people, like the more your influence grows, you start to meet other people with influence. And I have seen so many people, people that many of you probably follow behind the scenes. They're just not living it. They're not living what they're preaching publicly. And I think a lot of times what happens is we get all this zeal and all this passion for ministry. And I feel like it's easy to do. It's, it's super easy to get all this zeal, all this passion. Zeal and passion is really good. But when it's not rooted in love and wisdom, like that's when we've lost it. So, um, yeah, I, you know, my, my take on it, Hannah, would be a lot of times people end up getting a platform because there is some kind of favor, call and anointing. Yeah. And so that kind of gets them influence. But how they choose to maintain influence, oftentimes they will start selling. Hmm. They will start selling apparel. They will start selling um, health products. They will start, it's like they use the platform that their original call gave them yeah. to now it becomes about money. Wow. It becomes about fame. And so they, they, they still Jesus and praise the Lord, <laughs> yeah. but they're pushing. Yeah. And, you know, the Lord said to me one day, this generation is more addicted to an algorithm than the Holy Spirit. We we are yeah. we are monetizing, monopolizing, merchandising yeah. the anointing. And again, I speak as someone that at one time literally had more than a million followers online. The Lord asked us to shut it all down. I know what it's like to mm -hmm. be in that world. And so I really am speaking from experience that mm -hmm. oftentimes it's the trap. It's the enticement. Mm -hmm. It's something that's going to pull on you. So again, a lot yeah. of people pass a test yeah. of of obscurity. Yeah. They love the Lord. They didn't have a following. They get a following. They get notoriety. Their ability to stay pure, to love truth more than popularity, it's a really slippery slope. And oh, so sure. I know one of the things that I want to do moving forward is help people with influence prioritize the right things. That is awesome. That's awesome. I love that. That's really cool. So some viewers actually sent in some questions on like boldness and speaking the truth. Cause I know you speak the truth. Like you speak that hard, bold truth online and in person when you preach and you really carry the fear of the Lord. And so when you are speaking that truth and you're being bold, like how do you continue in that? How do you be bold and speak the truth in love? Yeah, that's such a great question. You know, I think that there's a difference between, um, you know, just speaking truth to speak truth and then actually doing it with mm -hmm. the love of the Father. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say, I think that we need to define what biblical love is so that we're understanding boldness and courage. Mm -hmm. I, I personally feel what a lot of people are calling radical today is just biblical. Mm -hmm. And so Good. for me, biblical love is this. I care more about where you're going to spend eternity than offending you right now. Yeah. So if I'm more concerned about long-term heaven or hell, mm -hmm. I'm going to risk speaking truth yeah. at the expense of offending you so that, again, we'll follow the ways of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Hannah, I don't know, you know, I, I've been to conferences and I'll tell people something like, you can't habitually and continually live in sin and call yourself a Christian. Yeah. And people are like, oh, and I'm like, <laughs> it's Romans 6, it's in the Bible. Yeah. Like, yeah. again, it's like, man, you know, people, they tell, I, that's like the thing we get, Jeremiah, we get letters from people, thank you for your boldness. And I'm like, I'm just preaching the Bible. So, yeah, yeah. you know, and I really do think because of this whole thing, it's like 
it's showing people how far they've strayed from the truth. Hmm. So the fact that we think a lot of people are bold is really, it's revealing, it's exposing yeah. our palate, if you will. Mm -hmm. When Paul told Timothy with the word of God, he doesn't say encourage, encourage, encourage. He says correct, <laughs> he says rebuke, and he says encourage. Yeah. And again, it's out of love. Yeah. I, I'm preaching to a crowd, I'm talking to a friend. Mm -hmm. I love you enough yeah. to speak the truth. Love confronts, love speaks the truth, mm -hmm. love is bold. Yeah. I, I, I call it an orphan spirit. I believe that orphans receive correction as rejection. And so there's an orphan spirit in our generation where people don't really understand biblical love. And so when they hear truth, they push it away and say, God's rejecting me rather than his sons and daughters. We should really say, thank you, Father, yeah. that you love me enough to confront me in my sin, yeah. to expose my wicked ways, that kind of thing. So you know, I sort of, I, I appreciate, you know, Jeremiah is so bold and he's courageous, but I'm like, it's the Bible. <laughs> it's just, we, our yeah. generation, it, we're into our feelings. Yeah. I love to try to tell people like, you know, God is more concerned with your character than how you feel. Uh, we don't worship our emotions. We worship the God of the Bible. And so I'm concerned constantly with idolatry. I say we're serving a God of our imagination yeah. and not the God of the Bible. And so I really think a lot of, a lot of people just need to get back to living out the Bible. Stop preach. You know, I tell people mm -hmm. don't, don't practice what you preach preach what you practice. That's a lot word. of the authority that people, when you sense like, man, this, there's weight to what this person is saying, it's not because they're just preaching it on the fly and then trying to live it. When you hear somebody that has boldness and authority, they're already living it privately. Yeah. So they're sharing out of a lifestyle mm -hmm rather than trying to drop a one-liner that gets lot, lots of likes and shares. And there That's are just good. a lot of people, they're typing in, th you know how it goes, We, you know, you try to type in things on YouTube or type, you know, that people will, you know, they'll search out, they'll like, and it's like, yeah, but does it have substance? Does it have weight? Yep. Those are the kind of things that matter. Yep, that's so good. Yeah, I've, I've experienced that as well. Like people will send DMs like, you're, you're so bold. Like, how can you speak up on homosexuality and abortion and all this stuff like that? And they always ask, you know, how, that's why I said viewers are sending questions like, how are you so bold? How, how do you be bold? But the thing is, when you are rooted and grounded in the word, like you're just going to naturally be bold. The prophet Jeremiah said, the word of the Lord is like a fire shut up in my bones and I cannot contain it. Like you mm -hmm. can't contain the word when you're firmly rooted and grounded and planted in it. So how do you think that this generation can get back to a balance where we're not idolizing our emotions and that we can be rooted and grounded firmly in the word? Yeah, I just think that that at the baseline, Christianity is not a popularity contest. The goal is not to win friends and influence people. Yeah. So like if I die to my need to please people mm -hmm. and I'm faithful to the word of God, that should allow where my trajectory, wherever I'm going to lead me in the will of God. Yeah. But if I believe, you know, I love what Corey Russell said. He said, Jesus is not a stepping stone into your destiny. Jesus is destiny. So That's like good. don't use God to get to where you want to go. God is where you want to get to go. Mm -hmm. So I just encourage anybody that's looking to be bold, courageous, take a stand for truth and your generation, just to kind of recognize and realize right off the bat, the goal here is not butts and seats. Yeah. The goal is to make disciples. Yeah. And again, yep. I'm talking as someone that pastored a thriving, successful congregation for years, never one time ever did our eldership team think, how can we get more people to come to this church? Yeah. It was like, how can we be faithful to the word of God regardless? So, yeah. you know, we, we, we all want to be loved. We yeah. all want to be liked. You know, we, I, I get all that. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are father pleasers. Yes. We are not man pleasers. So, mm -hmm. A little of that needs to die in all of us. Oh, for sure. Yeah, we are just fellow workers with the Lord. It's like God is the one who brings the increase, not us. Like we're just vessels for the Lord. So how do you um, in your life, how did you how do you just like 
Be a vessel for the Lord. I know a lot of young people are passionate. They have that passion for truth. They study truth and they just want to serve the Lord in whatever way they can. Like finding your purpose, finding your calling and just being a vessel for the Lord. How do you believe that you can do that? I'm going to go back to the practical love thing again. I hate to, <laughs> I hate to keep, you know, going back there, but you know, I just, no, I just live my life every day uh, looking for the Lord. Uh, I was in my car today and saw a man on the side of the road who I just noticed was heartbroken. I pulled my car off on the side of the road. I gave him money. We cried together. I prayed for him. Like, and if that's all that's that awesome. I do today, like that's Jesus manifesting love. And so yeah, I just, wow. you know, I, I, I always try to, I try to talk people out of like believing they have to wait for big moments. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll be effective when I get invited to preach at a conference or, you know, I'll be powerful when I have a huge YouTube following. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, every day there are opportunities that we get yep. to serve mom and dad, to serve our spouse, to love our kids, all of those things. So yep. I just think it's like, it's an available life that yeah. says, Lord, I know that you can use me and anything that I'm doing and just like, how can I be light? Because what I really believe, Hannah, is a lot of people, the spotlight they crave is the very very spotlight that's gonna expose them if they don't win in the everyday. Wow. It's just a lot of people are looking for that one hit, that shot at fame, mm -hmm. and then if if they get it, they lose it. Yeah. You know, they tear down with their character what they yeah. built with their gifting. And so wow. I just want to call it call a generation to be faithful. You know, yeah. God said those that are faithful with the small, I'll be entrust you with the big. And mm -hmm. so I just think it's an everyday kind of thing, just waking up saying, Lord, I'm available. How can I serve you? How can I be light? And uh, when you begin to get those victories, He'll raise you up. Amen. That's a good word. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. It has been an honor to have Jeremiah on here. By the way, if you can hear the construction out there, there's construction going on here at the church. So you guys might have saw it in the last video that I uploaded is, or heard it as well. Um, but it's been an honor again to have you on. And if there's anything like you want to share about, I know that you have wrote books and you have a conference coming up. So I don't think yeah. you want to share about any of that. And I can link it in the description. Yeah, sure. Yeah. If you want to follow our ministry, it's the altarglobal.com. Uh, you can follow the altar global on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, we do have an upcoming conference coming up September 16th through the 18th, Dawsonville, Georgia. Uh, just a lot of revival, excitement, uh, the return of the Lord, uh, some real raw stuff going on. So we'd love for you to join us. And Hannah, thanks for uh, having me on today. Yes, thank you so much for coming on. This has been awesome. And make sure you go check all those links down below. I linked all of the social media and just the website links and all of that. Thank you again for watching this video. God bless you guys. Keep looking to Jesus. Remember that everything's gonna be all good and peace, peace out. out. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for watching my video. Make sure you check out my other videos over here and subscribe over there.